when I first looked into doing a story about Auschwitz, the first name I came up with was Dr. Joseph Mengele, who was known as the Angel of Death. He was a man who, within the Nazi regime, was probably up there on one of the most evil. He was the doctor here at Auschwitz, and he performed a lot of very cruel, really horrible experiments, mostly on the children here. But in my research, I found the name of what could only be known as a hero of Auschwitz, a man who volunteered to come here to tell the story and expose what was going on here. And that man is Vytolt Poletsky, known as the Volunteer of Auschwitz. Vytolt Poletsky was born in 1901 in northwest Russia. His family, having been deported from Lithuania for participating in the January Uprising, insurgency ran in his blood. In his teens, he joined the Polish army and fought against the Bolsheviks and became a career soldier. During Germany's blitzkrieg across Poland, Polecki fought until the remains of the Polish army retreated into neighboring countries, at which point he became active in the underground resistance. With several others, they established the secret Polish army, Tania Armia Polska, or TAP, intent on gathering intelligence, sabotage, and continuous fight for independence. The Gestapo, with insider information, continuously hunted members, sending many to the newly created Auschwitz, and on September 19, 1940, Vytol Polecki would be among them. Now, there are multiple accounts as to how it actually happened, from him being arrested in the flat of a friend, to simply walking up and joining a group of men already arrested. But what is known, he was using the identity papers of a man named Tomasz Serafinski, mistakenly thought to be dead. He would use that ID through his entire time at Auschwitz. At this point in the war, the knowledge of the atrocities happening at camps across Europe may not have been fully understood, and this plan, devised by members of TAP and carried out by Vytol, may have underestimated the true conditions at the camp. Upon his arrival, he was given number 4859 and immediately began carrying out Tapp's plan, that of establishing a base of prisoner resistance, sourcing food and clothing, helping prepare escapes, and sending documents and reports back to Tapp leadership. His most ambitious plan, after forming the military organizational union in the camp, was preparing prisoners to take over the camp once he could organize outside forces to airdrop weapons or troops inside the fences. His first report left the camp in the hands of a released prisoner. It described the camp's layout, the grueling work, starvation and punishments, and what were the most common causes of death. This dispatch made its way to the minister of the Polish government exiled in London. This was the first notion that any outsiders got of camp conditions, reaching them in late 1940. Follow-up reports delivered by members of his camp union who managed to escape explain in detail the way Soviet prisoners were brutalized, but even more extensively, the extermination of the Jews. His reports urged those in London to inform whichever governments they could to protect and shelter anyone the Nazi regime would deport to the camps for their final solution. Pilecki's following dispatches urged the Polish commanders to liberate the camp, or if unable, to supply prisoners for an uprising and destroy SS warehouses and barracks through aerial bombing. Despite his information, he received nothing but silence from leadership. It was then, in the spring of 1943, that he decided to escape. Pilecki, along with two others, were working at a bakery outside the confines of the camp. The three men managed to cut alarm bells and barricade their guards in a woodshed before escaping to the east. Once he escaped, Vytolt Pilecki continued writing reports of the camp, but was never able to convince the underground Polish home army to liberate it. He rejoined the resistance as a member of a sabotage unit, as well as participating in the Warsaw Uprising, and continued to try to provide support to those in the concentration camp. A lack of men and supplies meant that only intelligence gathering and sabotage were readily permitted. During the Warsaw Uprising, he was captured by Germans and held prisoner until the end of the war. After the war, he joined the Polish Second Corps, gathering intelligence for them against the communist authorities that now controlled the region and who were actively trying to crush the Polish underground. In May of 1947, he was again arrested, this time by communists. He was tortured, put on trial, and sentenced to death. And on May 25, 1948, Vytolt Polecki was shot in the back of the head and buried in an unmarked grave. The man who had survived three years at Auschwitz 
had spent his life fighting for Poland, was dead. Courtesy of communist censorship covering up his story, it would be decades before the public would find out just how much he had sacrificed. And it wasn't until the fall of communism in the 1990s that his legacy actually came to light through books, awards, decorations, and monuments. We won't ever know the exact extent of his contributions, but it's safe to say Vytol Pilecki was every bit a hero. Thanks for watching, and as always, until next time, get lost.